Chapter 4 Kieran showed improvement the next morning. Everyone was elated except Rosemary. She wanted him to feel better, but she knew the sooner he was, the sooner he was likely to leave. After Dr. Fredrickson left late Thursday morning, Rosemary took a tray of breakfast to Kieran. Still a little dizzy when you get up? she asked. Kieran sat up when she entered. A bit. Doc says if my cough isn't getting worse, and I don't have any new symptoms, which I don't, that I'm healing for the, heading for the upswing. Rosemary placed the tray on the bed beside him. Why did you pick Poplar Ridge for camping? Oh, I read about it in a backcountry forum. They said hardly anyone goes up there in the winter. He picked up his fork and chuckled at the heart-shaped scrambled eggs framed in bacon. Rosemary had added two fresh-baked biscuits and a small cup of sausage gravy. Thanks for the food, again. Everything you make is really good, he said. Of course, I've had to help feed my picky sisters for years. Kieran grinned and cut himself a bite. Rosemary freed a loose thread on her sweater. You know, no one goes up to Poplar Ridge in the winter because it's dangerous, right? Yeah, perfect place for me. Just not those two little guys. Kieran chewed and gestured over his shoulder toward the mudroom. Rosemary couldn't imagine enjoying that windy crest enough to sleep there for a week. A tent would have to be staked down good and solid, or she imagined it would all blow away, maybe even taking the occupant with it. Best view of the mountains, Kieran added. It was best at dawn and dusk when the hills have light, but the valley is dark, and there's a sprinkle of stars in the sky. It is so quiet out there, except for those two little fuzzballs. Rosemary held up a finger. Oh, by the way, Dad said a neighbor's German Shepherd mix ran away to have her puppies, and there's a small herd of goats living on Poplar Mountain after they got out and disappeared a year ago. He said he'd seen tracks, so that's likely how they ended up together. Kieran looked at the door. Rosemary checked behind her but saw nothing. What is it? she asked. He shook his head. It makes me want to go search the mountain to see if there are others lost up there. You are in no condition to go anywhere. Noticing Kieran was finished with his meal, Rosemary poured him a cup of medicine. Besides, Dad said, our neighbor found their dog and six puppies, so that's a good sign. After he drank down the medicine, she took the empty cup back and picked up the tray. I'll let you get some sleep. Wait, Kieran stopped her gently with a hand. I'm... Not tired. I mean, I can't do much, but I would like to spend more time with you. Rosemary thought for a moment. Doc said no moving around until tomorrow, but I suppose I could set up a movie tonight. My sister, Sky has been helping a lot in the greenhouses, but I really should go check in and contribute. Can I come with you? I'd like to see more of this place. Kieran's brows pinched. He wheezed as if fighting a cough. Rosemary stopped in the doorway and looked over at him. Best stay in until tomorrow. Would you like an ice pack? He coughed several times, then braced his side. Yeah, unfortunately, I think when I fell, that's when the kid broke her leg. I feel terrible about that. Dad's pretty good with patching up animals, and Marty visited, she said. He's our veterinarian. Got a good splint on that little leg. I think she'll be fine. Rosemary left and went into the kitchen. Cleaning up his dishes and putting the tray back on the counter, she grabbed the ice pack and returned to his room. Easing into the doorway, she noticed he was up and standing in front of the mirror. Movement drew her attention to the t-shirt he pulled over his head. Catching only a glimpse of his skin was enough to make her pulse race. Rosemary flew outside, closing the door behind her. She pressed herself against the wall, startled by the urge she felt to comfort him and his bruises with a tender touch. The discoloration was healing but looked awfully painful. She glanced down at her Celtic knotwork cross-stitch on the chair outside his room, trying to distract herself from the fact she'd walked in on Kieran, changing. The door cracked open. Kieran's green eyes traced down her body, then up again. He looked ashamed and almost sad. I'm sorry, I didn't warn you. I'm sorry I didn't ask if I could enter. Except she wasn't sorry. 
She had a full view of the damage in Kieran's physique. I didn't expect you to be up. Kieran smoothed his clean t-shirt, then braced his side. Finn brought me a bag of my stuff. Helped me get a shower in yesterday while you and Amber were out working. Rosemary hated the pain in his eyes. She offered the ice pack to him. Thanks. He took it and delicately rested it over his side. I imagine your hands were getting cold. She burned up with embarrassment. Her hands didn't mind the chill. I'll let you rest. I'll be back in to bring you dinner. If you feel up to it later, I'll set up a movie. Only if you join me, he said. Join him? She thought. Rosemary had work to do, but desperately wanted more time to talk with Kieran. She stuttered, uh, Sure, uh, of course. If you want, he added. She daringly met his eyes. I do. Kieran's lips parted with a breath, and Rosemary realized her mistake. She was teasing a fragile heart. She just wasn't sure if it was hers or his. I'd like to watch a bit of the movie with you. I have to carry my own weight for a bit, though. Okay. He left the doorway cracked and climbed back into bed. Rosemary put on her coat and hurried outside into the cold where she searched for Skye in the greenhouses. She couldn't believe she'd said those two words in front of him. I do, she thought. It was a cruel joke to a man who'd recently been left by his fiance. Rosemary shoved her hands in her pockets with force and scolded herself under her breath. What are you doing out here? Sky asked, straightening from the bush of cherry tomatoes she picked. I've got things under control. He needs to rest, and I feel like I haven't done any work for the last few days. I feel behind, Rosemary said. Sky shook her head. I've inspected the rows. I got the shipments off this morning. I sent home your two remaining workers for the weekend because of the snow in the forecast, so they could take care of whatever they needed to. Relieved, Rosemary hugged her sister. Thank you. I guess all that's left is to come up with something for dinner. I vote your creamy chicken pesto pizza and salad. Salad? Rosemary frowned and rested her hand on Skye's forehead. It felt normal. The sister who always snuck out and got into the ice cream at night when she was little now wants a salad? Skye chuckled. I had enough sugar last night with a sprinkle fight to get me through to the party tomorrow, and you know I'm going to eat a ton of junk then. Picking up an empty basket, Rosemary smiled and set about collecting what she needed from her private section of the greenhouse. How was your call with Cam? Rosemary asked her. Her sister was quiet for a long moment as she trimmed a few branches on the tomato plant. Rosemary braced her basket in two hands and walked over to her sister. Sky. Her sister's dark eyes were framed in red. He said he didn't want me to wait for him anymore, that I should go and be happy with someone I can be with now. Skye sat on the raised bed ledge and wiped her eyes. Rosemary set her basket down, joined her, and drew Skye into her arms. What did you tell him? The same thing I always do. Rosemary sighed. Sky had kept her cool despite the upset she obviously felt. That you're staying by his side, huh? Yeah, I want to be with him, no one else. Sky sniffled, but he said he's afraid I won't like him when he comes home. Rosemary rubbed her sister's back. We don't all always get along, but we always get through it because we love each other. Love doesn't leave when things get hard. It sounds to me like he's worried about you. Perhaps he's struggling to focus, or maybe he's feeling insecure because he's afraid you'll change your mind when you see him again. Skye studied her hands as if they were unfamiliar. I don't know what to say. I'm worried he won't make it home. I know. Rosemary dried her sister's tears with a corner of her shirt. Just tell him the truth that he doesn't need to worry because you're not going anywhere. Maybe it will be fun to get to know each other again. Go on a new first date. Sky finally wrapped her arms around Rosemary. You always know what to say. I hope Kieran knows how lucky he is. Rosemary stood and collected the basket. 
No more of that talk. Kieran has a broken heart. There will be no pushing him into a relationship with anyone by any of our sisters. Or that will show blatant disregard for his mental and emotional well-being. And that's not what this family is about. Sky curled her lips into her mouth, trying to hide a smile. Rosemary rolled her eyes. Spit it out. We only defend what we love. You taught me that. And you like him. After a deep breath, Rosemary turned for the door. She wasn't going to discuss her feelings for Kieran with anyone. She had seen what Amber went through with Finn and had no desire to start anything when Kieran hadn't expressed any interest. As far as she was concerned, Kieran's heart still belonged to another. <laughs>